So hello and welcome back. Today we will have lecture 2-2A on probabilistic robotics. We will discuss a simple example of state estimation, describe the difference between causal and diagnostic reasoning, and then use Bayes' rule with background knowledge to examine recursive Bayesian updating. Please note that some of the slide content as well as the course content comes from probabilistic robotics in the Intelligent Robotics and Autonomous Agent series by Sebastian Thrun, Wolfram Burgard, and Dieter Fox. And to find out more about their work, please visit probabilisticrobotics.org. So as a simple example of state estimation, suppose we have a robot that obtains a measurement Z at a door. And the robot is trying to sense whether the door is open or closed in order to go into the room and fetch an object. So we wanna estimate a belief about whether the door is open or closed so remember we talk about one of the challenges of robotics is uncertainty. So you may never be, the robot may never be 100% certain about whether the door is open or closed, but we may wanna state that once it exceeds some given threshold, we can be pretty confident that the door is open and the robot should go in. So the question becomes, given a measurement Z from some sensor on the robot, what is the probability that the door is open? So we call this causal versus diagnostic reasoning. And the difference is, diagnostic would be, the robot has sensed something, what is the probability that the door is open? So tell us the state of the door given some measurement. It's like a diagnosis if you think about it in medical terms. Causal would be, given that the door is open, what is the probability that the sensor reads that the door is open, right? We know that this also is not 100% guaranteed because we know that sensors have error. So often we will say that causal knowledge is easier to obtain, right? Because we know we can get sensor or measurement data from the robot sensors. So the way you would get that is you would put the robot in front of the door and let the sensor measure a large number of times with the door either opened or closed and then create a, distrib a distribution of the measurements of that sensor data for an open or closed data. Fit that to some kind of continuous function or discrete measurement so you now have some kind of way of modeling or having a sensor model based upon whether the door is open or closed. Bayes' rule allows you to do this by using this causal knowledge. And so we're going to continue our discussion of the Bayes' formula that we had from our previous lecture. And what this says is that given that I have a measurement, what is the probability that the door is open? But once again, we talked about it may be easier to find, given that the door is open, what is my sensor measurement? And then we multiply that by the probability of the door being open over the probability of that sensor measurement. Um, if you don't know anything else about the probability of the door being open, you may wanna just make it 50-50 that the door is open because people walk in and out of a door all day. So here's a state estimation example where we're gonna give some quantities to this. The probability of a certain sensor measurement given that the door is open is 0 0.6, and the probability of a certain sensor measurement given that the door is not open is 0 0.3. So we now know that we're gonna use a uniform prior, as I said, assuming we have a 50-50 chance of the door being open or closed. So the probability of the door being open given that sensor measurement is then found by the probability of Z, given that the door is open, divided by the probability that the door is open. And we talked before about using Bayes' rule in order to estimate the probability of Z at the bottom. So we just have the probability of Z, given that the door is open, times the probability that the door is open, plus the probability of Z, given that the door is closed, times the probability of the door being closed. So we get 0.6 times 0.5, over 0 0.6 times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.3 times 0 0.5. So we have a 0.67 probability that the door is open given the measurement Z. So now the question becomes, what if 0.67 is not high enough or a, 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 high, a high enough confidence for the robot to want to proceed to go through the door and fetch an object? So you have to have a way to combine evidence or getting more evidence in order to increase the probability in order for the robot to have a higher confidence to go through the door. So the way you would do this is by adding, let's say, another observation. So maybe instead of taking one sensor data, you take two readings, or maybe you have 
redundant sensing. So maybe you use the sonar and infrared or the sonar and the laser to get sensor data, but you integrate this new information in order to estimate the probability of the door being open and to get it at a higher confidence level than 0.67. This is called recursive Bayesian updating. So now we have the probability of X given Y and our additional information Z. We saw this in the previous lecture. And now our Bayes rule becomes the probability of Y given X and Z is the probability of X given Z and the probability of Y given Z. So if we then do a substitution in our previous formula, then we would say X is going to still be X. Um, which is the door is open, but now we're going to have Y equal to Z in and Z equal to all of these other readings, right? So instead of just having one sensor or measurement, we have numerous and we're modeling like this. So now we can rewrite Bayes rule as the probability of X given Z one dot, dot, dot to Z in is the probability of Z in given X and Z one to Z in minus one and the times the probability of X given Z1 to Zn minus one over the probability of Zn given Z1 to Zn minus one. So what this is saying is, if I know a sensor reading at a certain period of time, what's the probability of the previous readings telling me something about that current reading? So what is the likelihood of a measurement giving I know that the state of the door and all of the previous measurements? So we don't know if this is guaranteed. We have uncertainty and we know we're in a mobile environment where people are walking in and out. The door can open and close, which means the sensor data would change, but you can use recursion in order to find this value. So what's the probability of X giving Z1 to Zn all these previous reason, readings of that measurement data? So we do this by dealing with the denominator using normalization to simplify this equation. And then we have to make some independent assumptions in order to simplify it more in order to solve. So assume we can ignore the state of the door because we don't really know that. So we can then do the measurements to tell us something about the previous measurement. Well, if you're in a similar region, you maybe can say that as long as I know the previous sensor measurements, it would tell me something about the current sensor measurement. But once again, you have to assume that the world is not changing or that the robot has not moved because I cannot do this if the robot moves or the world changes. So just because, for example, I read five inches a second ago doesn't mean I'm still gonna read five inches if somebody went through the door and opened it up. However, if we know the state of the door, then that will tell us something about the sensor data. Right. So if we have been reading the, the state of the door for a while, we know the state of the door, then we can assume that the measurements are going to still be similar. However, if we don't know X, which is the current state of the door, then we cannot say that this independence is given because we know that the sensor does depend on the state of the door. But if we don't know the state of the door, then we can't say we have an independent reading. So let's assume we can make an independence assumption and we can get rid of Z1 to Zn minus one. Because what this tells us is that if I know the current reading, then I know that that is independent of all of the previous readings. So we can also ignore the state of the door because we don't know that. So the Markov assumption is that Zn, the current sensor reading, is going to be independent of any previous sensor readings because we cannot say that they rely on each other. And we also cannot say that it relies on X because we also don't know the current state of the door. So now that equation can be simplified to the probability of X, given the previous sensor readings and combining all of them is the probability of the current sensor reading, given the state of the door X times the probability of X, given all of Z1 to Zn minus one measurements divided by the probability of the current measurement given the previous measurements. So once again, we're going to use our normalization constant to rewrite the denominator. So we're going to have that eta is going to be the product of all of our sensor readings, one to n of zi given x times the probability of x. And that's now going to be times the probability of the nth measurement given x times the probability of x giving Z1 to Zn minus one. So what we should see here is we're slowly getting this to a point where we could solve it with a computer by using recursion 
if we're going to use all of the previous measurements in order to get the current measurement in order to get a belief about the state of the door. So it's the product of the likelihood of all of the individual measurements to give us the current state of the system is what we're doing here. So let's look at an example of this where we're now going to have a second sensor reading. So the probability of sensor reading two, given that the door open is 0.5, and the probability of sensor reading two, given that the door is closed is 0.6. The probability that the door is open given the sensor reading one is two thirds because that's what we found in the previous example. So now when we do this again, the probability that the door is open given two sensor readings is the probability of the second sensor reading given that the door is open and the probability that the door is open given the first sensor reading divided by the probability of the second sensor reading given that the door is open times the probability that the door is open times the first sensor reading, plus the probability that um, the second sensor reading given that the door is closed times the probability that the door is closed given the first sensor reading. So now if we stick this in our formula, we get that the probability that the door is open is now 0 0.625. So notice that by adding in that second sensor reading, it actually lowered the probability that the door was open from 0.67 to 0.625. And this concludes our example of using recursive Bayesian updating by adding additional sensor readings in order to decrease or increase confidence in the state estimation. Have a robotastic day.